Welcome back, everybody, to the Small Town Collectibles YouTube channel. I'm Jimmy Don Kerr. My guest tonight um, goes without saying, probably one of my favorite channels. Um, somebody that I picked up on a while back and then kind of got to know through my friend Slotted Up uh, 503. And, and that's really how, how I kind of found the channel. And so when you go to this guy's channel, you might see all kinds of crazy things. You might see Arnold Schwarzenegger unboxing comic book mystery box. Hell, you might see Al Pacino. Um, you're going to see some comic book auctions. You're going to see all kinds of just cool, fun content. So everybody join me in welcoming to 10 Questions, the Solid High Comic Guy, the man of a thousand voices, the man, the myth, the legend, Adrian APM. Hello, everybody. Jimmy, thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone, for watching us. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. this. This sounds like a fun little adventure here. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I really appreciate you coming on. I've, I've been wanting to kind of grab you and bring you on here for a while just to learn more about you. That's been kind of the fun part for me in doing this series is just really getting to know these people that I actually watch on YouTube. Sure. You know, sure. and kind of getting to know them a little bit and, and letting the audience get to know them a little better, too. So let's just start with question one. It's probably the dumbest question I'll ask tonight. Um, what does the APM and Adrian APM stand for? Is that just your initials or? It's just the initials. Um, I've used it as a stage name for as long as I can remember. It, it, it just it kept it simple, to be honest with you. And it works. It just works. You know, it just it's easy to go with. And it's 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 kind of got that you know, that show title name and it's simple. And I, I was like, Hey, yeah, that's what I'm right. That's no, what it absolutely, it 100% works. Like I thought, man, Adrian APM, that's kind of cool. So it's really, your name's Adrian and then APM are your initials. So yep. Adrian APM. So yep. now you said that, you know, it, it's your stage names. Talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, like I, my whole life I've been a performer. Um, I've been in bands. I've done, if, if I'm not working with a band, I'm, I was DJing. If I wasn't DJing, I was doing like a hip hop thing. I mean, I literally, would jump i had to always be doing something i couldn't sit still like if the band couldn't play this weekend or i'd be like okay i need to dj or I, I need to host an event or i need to put an event you know like i just constantly needed to be doing something because i just i you know obviously now it's been the worst time ever because i can't do any of that but you know um it's just yeah it was just the pure just entertainment performing on stage and just having fun you know so when you say band are you talking like a rock band or is it yeah like i had a i had a band uh, we were called bigger than you um, we were like a tenacious D mixed almost with every genre though. But I mean, we, you know, we could have a song that sounded blues, you know, cause I played harmonica too. And you know, it would be bluesy. Then we do something that sounded reggae. And then we do something that had like a sublime feel to our heavy metal. And we were just a, like, we even had a song called Wanalea and it's just, it's, you know, it's all about Star Wars and, and you can go to uh, reverbnation.com slash bigger than you. And all the music's free to download. So, <laughs> oh, I'm absolutely going to check that out because I mean, I am a massive music fan. I, I didn't know that you were. So, are you like the lead singer type? I am the lead singer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Good deal. And then, so you talked about DJing. You just go to a club and and spin or yeah, you know, yeah just at, anytime I have the opportunity. You know, I, if someone's like, "Oh, we need a DJ for the night," I'm like, "Oh, I'm, I'll do." It. <laughs> you know, well, just, cool. And I went by DJ Chimichanga Tomato Slice. Nice. You may no. say Deadpool was a little influenced. From my <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. All right. So question two and, and how I came to know you was through the collectibles game, through the comic books and sure. uh, the mystery boxes. So what or who got you into collecting? Ooh, collect, I've been collecting a long time. Um, God, it goes way back. I mean, I, you know, I remember being at my parents' house like uh, when I was a kid and, you know, or me and my brother, we were, you know, both kids and, he was in, I was, he was into skateboarding. I was, I was kind of into skateboarding too. And I remember in our basement, we actually, we actually made a skateboard slash comic shop in our own basement. So we do custom boards and I would have comics and it, it made no sense. And it was in a, a, a dingy basement, you know, but it was just, you know, it, and that's where I started, you know, Spider-Man was like the first comic I bought and, you know, I was hooked And there have been times where it like kind of tapered, but I always had, comics and i always stayed nerdy like it never left me you know so was there anybody in your family like or was it just something you happened on to like for me i mean if you've watched this at all i had an uncle who was kind of into it and that's what got me into it did sure. you have a family member or did you just find it no uh no family member um you know my dad he he had actually he had given me a comic when i was younger he uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have got it when i was younger but i don't know if you're familiar with mr natural 
Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, this is like something like, no, don't give it to your kids. <laughs> like, right. you know, um, but you know, they're like the freak brothers. That was like, you know, that, so not saying that started it, but it, it would definitely, it definitely had piqued my interest in comics, but no, otherwise there was no, nobody collected in my family. It was just something that appealed to me. It just always appealed to me, you know? Well, that's cool. So question three is, you know, how I found you, of course, was through the YouTube channel. And like I, I mentioned, slotted up and, you know, he was opening some of your boxes and doing some things like that. So how long have you actually had a YouTube channel? I've had this YouTube channel since, I, I think since YouTube started. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't always put out content. Like there's a lot of videos that just aren't out there anymore because it was just goofy stuff. I kept some of the old ones up just to show transparency of like some of the goofy stuff we did. And, you know, I got like a video of me dancing with a couple of the green Bay Packers and, you know, like there's just random, really random stuff up there. But, um, you know, there's like one of me, uh, when I was building houses in new Orleans with uh, Lincoln park, the band, you know, Oh wow! So there's definitely, you know, like there, there was all kinds of stuff and now it's definitely different than what it was because the, you know, the whole pandemic kind of gave me that opportunity. I was like, well, why don't I just have fun with the stuff I already deal with and, make it more interesting, you know, do something different. No, that's cool. So, cause I know you said when we started, you know, you always had to have something to do. And I was going to ask yeah. was the, did the pandemic kind of cause you to say, okay, I've got this outlet here. I can be creative. I could do something fun, you know, yeah. and, and hang out with some cool people. So that's really kind of what really, I guess, pushed the past year. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, like it, I just needed something to do, like just, cr you know, creativity, like it's always going through me and I just like, okay, I need, I need to do something. I want to do something fun. I want other people to enjoy it. And I was kind of doing like checking out everybody about comics and stuff. And I saw, oh, yeah, there's a lot of unboxings. I had never really done that. And I'm like, well, I'd like to be different though. You know, I don't want to be the same. So I came up with the whole niche of doing, you know, impressions with the unboxing. So that's cool, man. So I got to, I got to jump back for just a second. Sure. So you said you were building houses with Lincoln Park in New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> so like, how did that happen? Um, that actually, it ha I, I forget the comp the, the, the foundation to help put that together, but it was through, because I had done some look charity in my town and they were looking for people that had done stuff like that, you know? So it was, it was part of a thing like people would say, Hey, this is what we've done. Show what you've done. And then they were like, yes, we want you to come here. So I got to build houses with Lincoln Park and it was just, you know, and from that, I got to become friends with those guys. And, you know, it, you know, obviously that was like a, one of the best things, you know, ever. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. I oh, love Lincoln Park. Saw him in concert a couple of times, you know, hated, you know, obviously when Chester passed. Yeah, that was a sad um, day, man. That was sad yeah. Day. And, uh, but no, you know, was a really from, I guess, hybrid theory on, you know, I mean, I was a big Lincoln Park guy uh, yep. for the longest time. And, and Mike Shinoda even had that, um, I want to say, called it the Executioners. Um, well, I tell him, uh, was it Fort Minor? Or he, he he's done other projects, yes. Yeah, yeah but this was like, kind of like with a, a rap group, and I, I think yeah. the song was called "Going Down." Um, okay, I don't know, but anyway, no, I was always kind of a big Lincoln Park guy. I always dig, so that's cool. That's cool yeah. that you actually had the opportunity to go and do something good, but also get to meet, you know, with some of who I'm sure you know people you really looked up to in the music business. Oh yeah, I mean, it it was you know as soon as we met, it was we hit it off. I think they realized that I wasn't like some like crazed super fan, like, Oh, I get the opportunity to build with them, you know? And they're like, Oh, he's gonna, you know, no, I, I, we built houses and I had fun, <laughs> you know, oh, man. like we just, we made it work. And then, and like, it, you know, our relationship went on from there. Every time I'd see them, anytime I went to a show and, you know, so. Oh, that's awesome, brother. That's cool. And that's cool. So do you do a lot of charity work otherwise? I mean, I know, I think, you know, or you commented on a post where I'm doing this thing right now with uh, yeah. the American cancer society and street level hero LA. Uh, and, the American Cancer Society and Cancer Research has been a big part of my life really for probably the past 10, 15 years. And yeah. I've done a lot of work through my business with them. Is that something that you've always kind of been into? Yeah. And, and, you know, it didn't just start with my dad, my old man, as I told you, you know, he, he's been affected by it twice now. And, uh, you know, well, anyone can be passionate about any charity. I mean, any charity is fantastic. If you're donating sure. to charity, you're, you're doing a great thing, you know, but the whole cancer thing is I kind of jumped on that board and then there's, Bleep cancer, you know, that foundation. I didn't want to say it on channel. I don't know, you know, so, um, and uh, you know, I donated part of that. And then I also raised uh, money for the music for relief program. And yeah, I've done 
I've done some big deeds. <laughs> That's fantastic, man. That's good. Um, so question four, and again, you know, you kind of mentioned it, but the, how did the impersonation start? Like, have you always done those impersonations like on stage, like when you were performing or, or how did that start? Yeah, that, that kind of went way back. Like, just like, I was always the goofball, you know, like it, you know, it was me and my brother and, you know, I was always like the, the kid that was like, okay, I'm going to be goofy and just do weird stuff. And I just started randomly kind of, you know, doing impressions or I, I would do an impression of somebody and next thing you know, and oh, I can do this impression. I can do this impression. I'm like, all right. And then I would, I would, uh, even for shows, I was like 13 at like a huge rock show or, you know, a 13 year old show, like, you know, and I, and I would come on the stage and introduce the band. I would play, I would, I would be Cheech and Chong and introduce <laughs> the band, you know, like it was just, you know, I did all kinds of crazy stuff, but I, again, it just went with that whole, I just love to perform. Like I, I had done stage, you know, I, I had done the, like some theater stuff. And so I, I literally, I've done it all. So, so it was there, like, what was the first impersonation that you ever did and that you were really kind of good at? Oh, wow. That's a toughie. Um, you know what? It, it may have, I, I, I couldn't do it right now because sometimes you, your voice has to be really perfect to do it, but um, probably Cheech and Chong, to be honest with you, because I was watching them on beta. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I, I, I and I think that may have actually been what first did it because you know you're watching and next year you're like it's gonna take it to the river gonna na 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 you know like and like and I just started I think that's kind of where it like started to you know form. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. That, no, that's awesome. I love. I just remember those movies. I mean, I was pretty young when Cheech and Chong came out and. You know, it was almost kind of foreign to me in a way, you know, sure. what they were doing. But it, it's one of those that sticks out. That's that's so cool. Um, so since you've started your YouTube channel, like, is there a part of it that is your favorite part? Like, what's what's the best thing about being on YouTube? Um, I mean, so far, I mean, if it's like the general just best part all around, I mean, it's like the people have gotten to meet, you know, like, and I know that's a generic answer. And I'm sure a lot of people have that answer. But I think about that now over the last year in the pandemic and everything I've, you know, all these people I wouldn't have connected with, you know, and, and now I've connected with, and I love it. Like I've met some great people and I found out people live close to me that I didn't know. I was like, Oh wait, it was like, wait, you live 20 minutes from me. I was like, how did that happen? You know, finding out Taylor lives 20 minutes from me. I was like, you know, like just, and we, would we have ever met? I don't know. You know, but now, that's great. So you and Taylor Winder actually live 20 minutes apart. Yeah, 20 minutes apart. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I just kind of, that just kind of blew my mind. And it's like, it's just meeting all the people. I, you know, and I, I get you're not physically meeting, meeting them at the moment, you know, but there's that opportunity that if there's a, you know, a convention coming up in the near future or something like how, how great it will feel to meet like you or any of these other people. Like, I mean, I, you know, I, I just think it'll give us that much more like just love and feeling towards people. <laughs> like just like, wow, I'm meeting you. It's so great to actually meet you, you know, in person. You know? Oh, so, I agree, man. I said it is, you know, and I've said it a lot on here and you know, for those who watch a lot of these, I forgive me for repeating myself, but I think it's a good point because, you know, I started this channel almost on like a dare, right? Sure. Almost trying to prove something to my kids that, you know, that you could do literally anything. All you had to do was try and I was not a big believer in almost the virtual community. You know, like I, I was more of a walk up and shake your hand, give you a hug kind of fella. Sure. And yeah. I have made connections with people through this channel that b blow my mind. And like there was a whole part of me that was missing that I didn't know was missing. And it, it, I agree with you 100%, dude. If, if we ever get back to normal and we can go to a convention and I can walk up and shake Adrian APN's hand, I'm going to be so happy, you know, to meet Slot. Likewise, up. man, likewise. <laughs> yeah, Gary B., you know, Taylor, yeah. DJ Lynx, Alan May, all these people that I have somehow magically fell into, this right. group of people, um, and who have become friends, like legit friends of mine. It's crazy, man. No, I think that it, while, yeah, a lot of people say that, but it's such, it's been the most important thing to me too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's the best part of this is just, like I said, dude, I, what I've known necessarily who Adrian APM was maybe cause I saw you on a show one time. I didn't even realize that was you on the, was it comic book guys? Oh, uh, comic book man. Comic yeah. book man. Yeah. And didn't even realize it was you. Um, <laughs> 
And so, but that, I mean, I don't know, like I said, it's cool. I didn't mean to ramble on there, but you know, that's kind of, I don't know. That's not been the best part. And just to get to sit down and talk to you, man, that's just so cool. And I think that's a great answer. So yeah, no, I, I enjoy it too. I really do. So question six is what does your family, like your immediate family, your better half, your kids, if you have them, like, what do they think about the hobby and, and doing the YouTube and all the performing that you do? Sure. Uh, yeah, my, you know, my wife definitely supports me as you know, she's been in a couple of videos. I'd like to do more than just one or two of them with her. Cause you know, we've, we had fun and she's not into the nerdy stuff as I am, which is totally okay. Um, but she doesn't, you know, she knows how much I love it. She knows how much it means to me, you know, like, and you know, cause it's been a part of my life forever. And you know, the rest of the, the rest of the family, they're just pretty much like, okay, that's his thing. You know, nobody's. Yeah. Nobody's like, oh, okay. You know, people get laughs from it, and I was like, you know, not they don't necessarily love it or anything, but you know, they they don't not support me. <laughs> but, yeah, no, they're like my wife is the furthest person in the world from a comic book fan, or but she'll go to the movies with me if I want to go to the comic book store and we're out. She'll go with me, you know, yeah. and she has no interest in that at all. But it's still cool though, and that's one thing I found, Adrian, as far as talking to people is generally people who are successful in this or, you know, having a good time or happy, have the support of their spouse, which is really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. So it's my understanding, and this is question seven, that you are pretty heavy into the buying and selling of comic books. Is that yeah. correct? Oh yeah. How did that start? Like, you know, you said, you know, kind of set up a comic book shop in your basement, right? You know, yeah. skateboard comic I book mean, shop. That's technically where it started, I guess. But uh, yeah. No, I, I would, uh, before, again, I, I don't mean to like kind of say, keep saying before this hit, but um, I was selling at like conventions and shows and, and then to just have that stop was, it kind of was like, well, what can I do? I have all these comics, you know, I got all this like boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes, you know, like, and that's what I did is because honestly, and another thing I loved was selling at shows, you know? Like I, I posted something on Instagram recently about how it shows I would mark comics with the word free, you know, and I would just slide them in and if, and see if people would notice them because, you know, they're going through, going through looking to, uh, wait, that's free. I'm like, that's free. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> awesome. and it was just the coolest thing. Like, it, so it was more than just buying, like selling at a show. It was just, again, the people, like, I love talking to people like, oh, what, what, you know, what are you doing? What, what is this? How did you start? What's your, you know, what's what are you doing? You know? So, I mean, there's so much to it, but yeah, I was, it was basically selling at shows. And so then I kind of just took up the Avenue where I'm like, you know what, why don't I try to do like some mystery boxes or just sell on YouTube? And I see all these guys doing it, you know? So, sure. So as far as like, have you, do you have like a nine to fiver, you know, as far as yeah. like a normal nine to five job? So you've got the normal nine to five, the comic book hustle was always just something on the side. It's always been a thing on the side. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to do it, you know, I mean, the job I do is not, not a difficult one. So I can still, I can, it's, it's one where I don't feel like oh, I'm overwhelmed on either end. Like, so it's very, you know, very easy for me. You know what I mean? So. Cool. So question eight is for somebody who was, and there's a lot of people who watch these videos who are watching YouTube, you know, that are looking for information on, you know, kind of tips or whatever on, how you get into selling comics, buying comics, doing those things. Sure. Like what are some tips that you could give some people? I'm not asking to give away the secret sauce, but just, you know, like what are some tips or some things that people should be looking out for or doing if that, if that's something they want to get into? Yeah. You know, if, if you can get out and you feel safe, you know, getting out to a place, you know, you know, if, if you're going to a shop or whatever, you know, these days you can still do that. And don't ever think that going to a comic shop, you're not going to find gold you know look through those back bins look through the ones that have no bags on them like look you know you got to search it takes time you know you're going to hurt your knees after a while you know you're 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 bending you're lifting you're doing and, and that becomes a regular work regular work in itself you know so i mean you know just get out there find antique stores you'd be amazed what you find at like antique stores like hidden away behind some you know trunk or you open a trunk and they happen to have comics in there that nobody knew about you know it's I mean, you just, you, you have to, you have to look for them and, you know, and if you're ever worried about that, if you're overpaying, you know, there's now these days, there's so many apps that can help you. It's a wonderful thing, you know, because when I was doing it before, you know, you just kind of had like, 
either an overstreet price guide in your hand or you were just kind of like, well, I think this one, you know, that that's everything, you know, so. No, one of my favorite thing in the world to do, I mean, almost, I would consider it almost like my happy place is to go into the back issue room of my LCS and just sit and dig through comics, you know, yeah. and there's some books, man, those boxes, you'll find them, like you said, in the back, I'll grab those and haul them out. And <laughs> sometimes I even organize them. I got a little bit of OCD and I'll organize <laughs> what my comic book shop guys. Like, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm putting these in alphabetical order, alphanumerical order because you're <laughs> driving me crazy. So, but uh, no, that is, that's one of the funnest things. So as far as like the hustle goes, it, did you travel all over? Cause you mentioned being on tour before we got going. Yeah. You know, was um, that go, you'd go all over the country and sell. Yeah. I, you know, well, I, the selling wise touring was like when I did the music thing. Oh yeah. Um, okay. So, but I, I have driven like I, you know, when I, when I was on comic book, man, I decided to drive there just so I could make like a road trip out of it. So it was like about, I did about a two and a half week or three week, right? I, I, I didn't just drive straight to Jersey to be on the show. I went, like, I just cut down from Wisconsin. I just, like, I went through, I went everywhere. I was in Ohio. I was checking, I was in Pennsylvania. I was just, I just wanted to go everywhere and check everything out. And, you know, that made it for an even better trip. So that's cool. So the comic book men, were you kind of scheduled to be on there? Or did you just go out there and yeah. just ended up being on the show? No, no. The, you basically it was like an audition to be on the show. Um, and then they, they basically, they give you the, the first audition and then they say, okay, you know, then you go to like the next step and AMC, like literally the top heads of AMC have to be like, okay, he's all right. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. and they got back to me right away. They're like, man, they loved you. I was like, well, great. I, you know, I love them too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, they're like, well, you know, go on the show and you know, if there's something you're looking for, that's, that's what you're looking for. And that's what I happen to be looking for. <laughs> you know, so. Well, that's cool, man. That's awesome. So you, you actually just made that thing a whole road trip and you just hit different cities going across the country, hit up comic yep. book shops and, and sold and just did different things. That's awesome. Yeah, it was honestly, it was one of the most, just weirdly enough, it was one of the most relaxing, like just mellow times ever, like just driving and, you know, music and just you know, hitting up weird little spots and comic shops and, you know. Yeah, that's it awesome. Yeah. It sounds like fun to me, honestly. Did you do that by yourself or did your wife I go did with it. you? Or I did it by myself, actually, yeah. That's so cool. Just, no, I, it's like a cross-country trip and just taking your time, hitting up shops, you know. I, I don't know. I think that would be fun. Yeah, it was, there was no, you know, there was no pressure. There was no, I didn't have to be anywhere, you know, cause I, I had taken off work at the time. So I could, so I could have that, that a lot of time, you know? And so I, there was no rush to be back. There was no, like I, I could do what I need to do and just enjoy myself. And, you know, and I, yeah, I did great. It was, it was, cool, it was so much fun. <laughs> so have you ever gotten to meet Kevin Smith or Jay and Silent yeah, Bob actually, as part of it? I flew out to LA back in 2008 and I, cause I had gotten invited to play cards with him and some of the people in the movie, uh, Zach and Mary make a porno. Yep. <laughs> so I got to fly out there and hang with him. And that's when I first met Kevin. So well, that's awesome, man. Very but me cool. meeting him actually like, and you know, getting to know him actually had nothing to do with me being on the show. Cause the be on the show was a complete just audition, you know? Yeah. You just auditioned and, and there you go. And that's I, cool, you know, brother. Yeah, it's and it's funny. It's like getting jobs like that, you know, because I like I've done like a few commercials. You know, I, I don't know if you work. I worked with Charlie Sheen, and like so, I've done some crazy things. So. You really have. All right. So, you, what did you work with Charlie Sheen on? Uh, anger management. Based, the movie. Uh, we, we we did promos for the show where I was sitting on the couch and he was my anger therapist. So. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. And that's so cool. If somebody out there can find those videos, please tell me. <laughs> so you don't like, even actually have a copy of them. You just no. I tried to get the transcript from the people at FX, and they just be like, "Oh, we don't." It was the most bizarre thing. I was like, "I just, I need that. I need, you know, yeah, I, like, I need oh, that. Like, those. I need that for my real, like, just you know, or for right. my personal memories, people." And they're like, like oh, "I love Charlie do. Shane." Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it didn't happen, but but That's oh yeah. A, but a funny thing about the impressions, though, while we were sitting there, you know, doing, do, you know, shooting for the promos. um, you know, there was downtime, you know, so I'm sitting there with him and I just, I, I just decided of course to bust out the impressions and also they started hearing me and like Charlie's looking at me. And then the guy, like one of the head producers of FX walks in and goes, he's like, can you do Christopher Walken? I go, yeah. So then he calls up Jay Moore and, you know, and he's like, I want you guys to do a walking off, you know? So it's like yeah. crazy how that world works where me, I'm just some Wisconsin dude. I'm like, 
oh, this is nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome, brother. That's very cool, man. Yeah. Um, so question nine, I don't even want to get off that subject. Like I want to stay there, but I, I do want to ask you a couple more things. So yeah. where you're, you know, you're selling some mystery boxes. Like I just watched today. I just had the chance to watch a $350 box that slotted up 503 purchase. Uh, you and I think Taylor and old man Eddie were on, uh, you know, maybe it was a live feed. I just didn't get to watch it. Yeah. It was, yeah. Live feed. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And you know, since you've been opening and you did one of the best videos the other day. Um, and I still have not got to comment cause I've watched it while I was driving, okay. uh, going to this dance competition. And it was like the evolution of a, a YouTube yeah. comic book unboxer. Yeah. And I think everybody, I heard all those guys say it too, but I was like, dude, is he talking about me? You know, is he, <laughs> you know, because I think we all have yeah. gone through that evolution at some point or another. Cause you're right. You're like, dude, when I first started opening boxes, every single box I opened was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. Right. I mean, like hands down, like you nailed that dude. That was so good. So yeah. what to you like makes up a good mystery box? Like if, if Adrian's buying a box and you know, he just something solid, you know, that's not going to just a good solid mystery box. Yeah. I actually had a discussion uh, with a, a new company today. And, I, you know, I was talking to him about that. And I said, you know, I don't need to get a grand prize to be happy. But I do want to get decent comics. Like, I do, I want to feel, you know, at least give me close to that value. Don't, don't under, don't give me something I'm going to find in a quarter bin and say it's a $5 comic. You know what I mean? Like that, you, you just got to take care of, you know, people when they're, when they're getting, you know, your product, you, you know, because you're selling yourself. I mean, that's, you know, I get it. I get a large company. It's different from me selling it, but. You know, in a mystery box, I want to get something that's going to stay within my collection. I don't want something that I'm instantly going, I'm flipping it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, and sometimes that happens because when you're doing stuff on YouTube, you know, you you need content. So you're going to, you know, grab a box and see what it is. But sometimes there's some really great boxes out there and, you know, you can't really go wrong. So is there, has there been a box that you found that you just really dig? Like you're just like, wow, you know, this is just a really good box. Yeah. You know, I, and I know a lot of people will probably give me slack, you know, just because, you know, he's been so good. I The reason I, I always say I'll say that Spider-Man booth is because you know what you're getting. And I don't yep. need to repeat it because you've talked about with him. Everybody, it's 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 like beating a dead horse. So, But I'm just saying you know what you're getting. <laughs> you know, it, and I've I've had the box Tiros and, I, oh, it was just a bad experience. <laughs> like, I've had the torpedo boxes and they were just insanely undervalued you know it'd be different if they gave you close to what you paid i'd be like okay that's fine even if they if it was all their variants or whatever as long as it kind of made it but when you were buying a box that's like 150 and you're getting 50 to 75 you're just going what did i just pay for you know yeah it's like i could have taken 100 bucks and just thrown it out the window over here and been the same thing yeah pretty much so i mean you know and there's you know honestly i i've gotten i'd say maybe i'll, I'll do like a out of like, the, they'll say out of 10 mystery boxes I've gotten from Instagrammers, there's only been like two that were like, ugh, you know, you probably shouldn't do this again, you know? But otherwise, that's why I love buying from like collectors and people just because you, you you know, they'll at least try to give you a piece of them. Like, they're like, hey, I know what I would want, so I'm going to give this to you and and I want you to have like an awesome box, you know? Because the, the feeling like when I watch somebody unbox, like one of my boxes, like... I get all like happy. It's it's stupid, but I can just feel them. I just like, like, that's how I want to feel. That's how I want to feel. And it's know? really hard. I don't know that people really understand. It's really, cause I put together one little run of mystery boxes, right? I just needed to flip some stuff, turn some cash, you know, and, and this community is really good about that. I, I joke a lot and say that we all just trade money and books around all the time, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but, but still everybody's cool. And you, even if you buy a mystery box, I'll end up with a couple of books at minimum that I'm going to keep in my PC. And then the others I can move and get most of my money back. Right. So, um, people don't really understand how hard it really is to put together a mystery box because right. there's a lot of factors that go into it. One is personal taste. You're not gonna make everybody happy. Right. Of course. But two, the values change so much, you know, yeah. they go up and down so much. And so it's hard to do it based on that. And then to really make a really good mystery box, you almost have to lose money, you know, right. no, um, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you know, because you want people to get good value. I know when I build them, I put crazy value in mind just because I just didn't. It was my first one. I just didn't want anybody to be upset. I was like, I want you to get good bugs. Right. Have, you, have you had that same experience since you started building them? Just 
because yeah, it's, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. And now I I still do put them over value, even if I you know if it's just selling one to one individual, or if it was doing like you know ten at a low you know lower low, lower tier, I would I still always I just want to put it over just because I don't think it should be, you know. <laughs> And if you think about it, you're not necessarily losing money. You know, if you already have the comics and there's something like, and you know, you know, because you got your PC PC, stuff that you're not going to ever touch, staying with you. But if you got the stuff you're like, ah, oh, you know, it's like, if you're already going, ah, no, take it and put it in. Because yep. you know what? Let them be happy. Okay, you lo- you lost 10 bucks, what they, or f- say 50 bucks that, what, you spent like four years ago? Why does that matter? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't you know? matter. You're right. And no, and that is, and that's part of the hobby too, really. It's one of the funnest parts of the hobby is you buy something because you think you want it or you think there's some speculation there or whatever. And then you're like, eh, don't really need that now, but there's something else I want over here. Yeah. You know, and so like, I, I mean, I've jumped in on raffles because, and even bought mystery boxes because I've known people in the community we're trying to get a grail. Like they were trying to get a book and this is what they were doing. So I would jump in on it just to help okay. out. And I've had people do that for me too. So I always think that's cool. It's one of the best parts about the community. Really. It's, I, yeah. I say it all the time. If, if the world acted like the comic book community did, it would be a whole lot better place. Man, I totally agree with that. I mean, it, I, to go back to it, I mean, it's just, it, all these people honestly are amazing. I don't know. I, I definitely feel lots of love. I mean, I got a little, I got a little slack from some people for that video I just posted because a lot of I people love that saw video. themselves in it and they got kind of, I was like, Hey, I, you know, maybe I, I would, I was like, I was, I don't know if I was ever that bad, but like, cause I knew what was happening, but I was like, I've done some of that stuff. I was like, I'm just as guilty, you know, like, dude, that video, it was, it was funny. Number one. And that was the point of it, right. Was to yeah, be yeah. a parody and to be funny. But it was kind of spot on too because I saw myself, and I think especially the first one, like there was there are one hundred percent stages going through when you first start your channel and you first start opening boxes to how it is now. Yeah, you know, and you know, I still like I don't want to bash anybody per se. Like if I I've had a couple of boxes that I've gotten that I recorded, I just didn't put up. Sure. You know, because I just didn't want to put that negative energy out there. I understand. Um, I understand. I've done the same. <laughs> yeah. And so, but no, I thought that video was so spot on. I loved it so much because I saw it and I was like, oh, this is going to be good. You know, because yeah. I knew you would do some characters and do some different things. I didn't expect you to change like 10 times. And- <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make it look like it was different days, like for, you know, real. <laughs> yeah, no, it was awesome, man. I love it because everybody, I heard you and Taylor and I think, Slot maybe talking like I, I will do that sometimes because I have to my schedule doesn't allow me to record like every day. So like on a Saturday, I will record eight videos. Sure. Yeah. And I'll have eight T-shirt changes, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, so it looks like it's a different day. Now, sometimes I forget and I just start rolling and I got the same thing on for two weeks. But, you know, <laughs> what do you want to write to? But yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. All right. So question 10. This is the last one. Sure. Um. I mean, I know that you and I, you know, kind of run a similar circle as far as the channels that we watch, but are there any channels out there that you watch that maybe I don't watch and, you know, maybe my audience wouldn't watch that maybe I should, you know, either look into about bringing them on to 10 questions or just start watching their channel? You know, to be honest with you, right now, I feel like we do kind of watch all the same channels. I mean, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you know, thinking about just just this the small group that it is and I mean, and it's not a small group because if you think like, you know, you're like, oh, I watch Slide It Up. And then you say, oh, I watch Taylor or I watch uh, like J Blitz or I watch uh, Average Will or, you know, and it just keeps going. That keeps going. You're like, oh, oh, oh yeah, Average Will. So I, I also watch Agu and I you're like it, it literally just keeps going. Like, so as soon as you're like, oh, there's only this. No, you're like, it just goes, goes, you know, it never really stops. And next thing you know, you realize you probably watch like. A hundred plus, and you're like, wow, do I watch all those? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. right. I, and that's one thing too, because you want to support everybody, right? Because there's people, people supporting you. You know, you see in your comments all the time. You know, when you you want to support everybody, but there's just not enough hours in the day no. to watch everybody. <laughs> that you no. know, and I, I try. You know, I mean, I'm not great at it. A lot of times, like I said, I the video you did, I haven't commented on it but I watched the whole thing from the beginning to the very, very end, even at the very end when you came back and said, Hey guys, I hope you took this as a parody. You know, it was fun. I watched the whole thing. Oh, sure. And, yeah. 
And so, you know, your watch time for me was great, but I, I didn't comment. And so right. I know some people, you know, feel like that, you know, oh, you're not watching me if you don't comment. So if you're watching this and you watch me, I watch your videos a lot, you know, but not just Adrian, a lot of people and I don't comment. So no, I, honestly, I do the same thing. I watch it'll, my playlist will just start and all of a sudden it'll be it'll be very Garrett Comic Town. Then all of a sudden the comic games and to Taylor and, and I just let it go because sometimes I'm working at the desk. And I'm doing stuff and I just let it go. And I, you, you can just kind of keep it watching, keep, you know, you so see you're watching it, but you don't, yeah, you can't always comment. It, it's just the way it is, you know? Yeah. So is there one channel in particular, like you would say, Jimmy, you know, you need to hook up with this guy and bring him on 10 questions. It would be a hoot. Average will. I mean, pe people love that dude. He's a great guy. Man. He's a guy that I've been thinking about and I, I've watched his channel some, um, but he's a guy I have been actually thinking about reaching out to. Um, and just, you know, sitting down to talk to, because everybody seems to love him, you know, like, he's he's just, just like a cool cat. <laughs> yeah, he just seems like a cool cat. So, uh, Adrian, tell everybody where they can find your stuff as far as, sure. you know, anything that you're working on, just kind of tell everybody where you're at. Yeah. Uh, you can catch me on, on YouTube. You just go to youtube.com slash solid high. Um, and it'll go right to me on Instagram. It's solid high, the comic guy. Um, you know, I'll have YouTube videos popping up here and there. And actually right now, via instagram i do have a little giveaway going on um you got to comment on the 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 many stages of the youtube comic book unboxer yes it's a long name but it had to be long yeah. um uh there's a certain hashtag you can use and you can win i got a free slab and a mystery box and giving away so you should cool. definitely do it. So if you are going to comment, uh, Jimmy, you make sure that you use that hashtag. <laughs> as soon as we get done, I will get off here and comment and hashtag. Well, <laughs> get on there, man. So look, brother, I really appreciate you coming on. I've had a ball talking to you. Um, yeah. You're an interesting cat. And I, I'm kind of thinking that maybe I need to have you back on and have a completely different conversation with you. Cause I think I could do about three episodes of 10 questions with you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we so <laughs> yeah, so we could definitely have some fun, man, but I, I really enjoy it. If you, you know, if you're watching this channel, go over and check out Adrian's. If you're not already, um, I'm telling you, you will dig it. Uh, the impersonations are phenomenal. Um, and the way that he does, and, and there's some theatrics to what he does, you know, it's, that sets him apart from what a, a lot of other channels do, uh, which is, which is really cool. And then I'm going to have to go check out this music. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, just go in <laughs> just with an open mind. And I mean, not saying we're bad. I'm just saying go in there with an open, cause we're, we're goofy, man. So. Well, it's cool, man. No, that's good, man. I like, I like all kinds of different music. You know, I live in the Hills and so everybody thinks that you're supposed to like country, but you know, I, I like some country music. It's usually old school. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah, I like some of that. I like uh, Metallica is my favorite band of all time, sure. but I also like some hip hop, you know, I like gangster rap, you know, yeah. I mean like there's a lot of different stuff that I, that I'm into. So, but anyway, what I was saying, go over, check out Adrian's channel. Uh, and go hit him up on Instagram. He's a fun follow over there too. And then of course, you know where to find me. Um, and I'll leave links to all Adrian's stuff down in the description below. And don't forget about the promotion that I've got going. It's for a limited time with street level hero LA, uh, where if you make a purchase and use the code STC 10, uh, you can get 10% off your order, but 25% of your order will go to the American cancer society, uh, for cancer research. And that was really cool of JPG to do, uh, yeah. you know, to hook up with me. He's a very generous guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just uh, a great member of the community. And um, so go do that. And uh, I appreciate it. And we'll try to raise some money. So guys, this is the man right here, Adrian APM, the man of a thousand voices, apparently hangs out with Charlie Sheen, Lincoln Park and, <laughs> and all kinds of crazy stuff. So definitely go check him out. And uh, as I always in these things, baby, until next time. Oh, 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 o